Hey, what's going on, everybody? Locked on Badgers. Big commit today. We got Dylan Graff on the show to discuss uh, how the newest Badger football verbal commit impacts the class and what we like about his game. All that and more on today's Locked on Badgers. You are Locked on Badgers, your daily podcast on the Wisconsin Badgers. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey, what's going on, everybody? Locked On Badgers. I am your host, Ryan Herrings. Thank you, as always, for making this your first listen every day. And I know it's a lot to do with the type of guests we get on the show. We got Dylan Graff coming on today. Very, very excited to have him on. We're going to bring him in right now. Hey, what's up, Dylan? Hey, how we doing? Good, man. We got news. Uh, literally, we, we had the show planned out, um, and then we received a commitment. So we wanted to talk about that. Um, Roderick Pierce, 6'3", 290 pound defensive lineman slash defensive tackle. I, I want to kind of get into where we think his position is uh, out of Brother Rice, Brother Rice, Illinois. That's a big time school, big time area for football. Um, yeah, so this happened just kind of happened. I already saw that as usual, you're on top of it. You put something up on Badger Wire. Uh, tell me what are your thoughts here? Did the commitment surprise you? Yeah, let's let's just start there. Definitely was a little bit of a surprise. Uh, that's not who I expected it to be coming today, but we are in desperate need of defensive line help, specifically at nose tackle. And I do believe he's being brought in to play that role. But I, you know, after just watching a little bit of tape, I think he's capable of playing really anywhere along the defensive line. I think that's the appeal here. Uh, if he is going to stick at nose tackle, a position that we don't have a lot of depth in, he definitely looks like somebody who can provide some interior pass rush, which is obviously going to be a huge need after Keanu Benton's gone. You know, there, there's just not a lot of depth there at the position, and I believe this is a class where we're going to see Wisconsin bring in pro probably another nose tackle yet. I Watching the film, um, and again, I haven't watched a ton of them. I haven't had a chance to watch a ton of them. This, to me, looks like a guy who's – being brought in as a nose tackle, but a different type of player than a Keanu Benton. Like you said, more of a pass rusher from the inside, not quite as big. Um, I like the upside as a guy who it looks like he could slide out to strong side defensive end, maybe on base downs if he had a bigger plug in the middle. Then on third down, maybe he's a pass rusher from the inside. I think there's some versatility there. Yeah, absolutely. I, I believe this is – he's got the potential to be a three-down guy. I, I, I also agree he could play out in the end. I don't know that he's going to be the guy that's out there just to eat up blocks. I, I do believe he's going to create create space, get after the quarterback a little bit. There's definitely some talent to unpack here. I thought this guy, and I want to keep it real in the show. Like I really want this to be a place where people can just we can just be honest with opinions. So I'm not, I don't want to take every recruit that that verbals and say, yeah, this guy is underrated and this guy is going to be the next great thing. That being said, the bit of film I watched here, reading some of the um, some of the news clippings. I actually really like this, the the get off, the athletic ability, his ability to run and chase as a 290 pound guy. I think this is going to be a really good play. Like, to, well, this is to me a really good recruit in this class, getting him early, getting someone who I think the athletic tools are more than just a plugger. So, um, curious where you think there with the upside based on what you've seen. Again, this just happened. We haven't had a ton of time to see again, but I was pretty impressed with the film. This feels like a guy who could blow up quite a bit. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you know, I think this is a player that might take you know a little bit of time to develop. You give him a year or two in the system, and I think he's going to push for time on the field. It's a pretty barren position, specifically at nose tackle. I mean, we don't know if Gio Piaz is going to stay another year. You know, we have Barton, who is a converted offensive lineman, who you know by all accounts did halfway decent this spring, but hasn't seen any game action. Curtis Neal is a guy who I'm really excited about, but he's still recovering from an ACL injury. The opportunity is going to be there. He's got mm -hmm. plenty of talent, and he does offer something a little bit different than some of the other nose tackles I just mentioned. So I, I agree. I think this is a guy with enough talent and enough upside that he can push for a role early, and he definitely has a lot more athleticism than your average nose tackle, especially at this size coming in right away. How does he compare a little bit to um, maybe some of the other defense linemen brought in? Maybe not Gio Piaz, but yeah, maybe. Like I feel like he's that type of build, but he's maybe a little more athletic. Yeah, definitely. He's got more get off. When the ball is snapped, he he's at the point of attack rather quickly and he he's able to shed blockers, not just gobble them up. There there's more to his game already. It just adds to the upside that I believe he brings to the table. This is another one too. We we've talked a lot about coaching transitions this offseason, but Ross Kal Ross Kalaji came on as a defensive line coach a couple seasons ago as a guy without that coaching background. You know, as he was an NFL player, but he'd been the strength and conditioning guy. 
And a lot of people were worried about a potential drop off, maybe a coach not having coached that position. It really seems like Kalaji has had no issues picking up a recruiting ball here and just running with it. Yeah, absolutely. He, I think part of the appeal is since he's come in, actually, at Wisconsin, they've played more defensive linemen than they had traditionally. Prior to him, they were, you know, rotating four, maybe five guys tops. And he's made mention on several accounts that he wants to have six guys see the field. You know, he wants to have two lines. And so it's a lot easier for a player to come in and see the field. And obviously that's appealing to any recruit. Is this one of the spots when you look at our Wisconsin's defense? I, I, I tend to feel like outside of a, maybe a shutdown corner or close to a shutdown corner, those are incredibly hard to get, but elevated corner play. And then I, I've always thought a little more athleticism from the defensive line or maybe a little more disruption from the defensive line is really the only other thing missing from this defense. Um, it's, it's exciting to me to see some steps, not just with uh, Pierce here, but um, coming back to last year's class, some, some guys being brought in that, that maybe rectifies that a little bit. Yeah, I, I can agree with that. I mean, obviously, a guy like Matt Hiddingson, he was able to provide something with pass rush. Obviously, Keanu Benton is a terrific pass rusher. It's kind of kind of his calling card. But, uh, yeah, in general, that's not what we've been used to. And I think that it, football is a game where it happens at all three levels. When the pass rush mm -hmm. gets there quicker, the corners have to do less. And when we play in Ohio State, we usually see our secondary kind of hung out to dry a little bit. That's kind of been our Achilles heel in those bigger games. But if you can get more of a pass rush up front, I think it mitigates that a little bit. Hey, talk to me about this. Cause this is something that gets thrown on a message boards all the time. I really want, uh, you're a very sharp guy on, on sports, football, basketball. I really want your opinion on this. There's a notion that three, four defense alignment, obviously the three, four defense alignment have a different role than four, three defense, defense alignment. We can all agree there. Um, yep. They have to eat up more blocks. They have to be able to hold up, um, to double teams a little more effectively to free up linebackers. But there's a notion that that's all that they're supposed to do. And I push back on that a little bit. I, no defensive line coach is going to say, don't be disruptive if you have the chance. Right. I, I agree completely. No, that's definitely not their only role. I do think that that's highlighted far more in a 3-4 than it is a 4-3. But even at Wisconsin now, they're getting more and more away from running the 3-4 as their base mm. defense anyway. So they, they need something as a pass rush. You know, they're often going two down linemen, and when that's the case, they are expected to get up to the quarterback. Two guys can't take on five linemen to free up linebackers. They do need something from they do need something from them as a pass rush. Dylan, you know, we're gonna move on next to uh I haven't had a chance to talk to you about Gus Yaldon yet, which was gonna we were gonna lead off the show with that until this last minute commit. Um, uh, but any last words on this one? Any anything else you wanted to highlight here with this commit? No, I think this is a huge pickup for Wisconsin. They were in desperate need of some defensive line help. I think that there's more coming after this, but this is the first pillar. Uh, somebody to be excited about, a kid with a lot of talent. And, you know, the Badgers are hot on the recruiting trail right now. We, we, not that long ago, we were pretty concerned about the state of just having Tyler mm -hmm. Janzi. And here in June, they've picked it up. We've got sure, five man. minutes now. Yeah, no, for sure. That's a great spot to leave it. Coming up next, guys, uh, we're really going to dig into Gus Yaldon and, and how he fits on this team a little deeper, how he fits defensively, um, potentially, with uh, Dylan. Uh, but first, today's show is brought to you by Bill Barr. Uh, Bill Barr, again, I've talked about it over and over again, but it's because we love it at, at Locked On. It is a nutritional powerhouse that tastes like a candy bar. And it, it's something that, you know, you can, like I have said before, you throw it in your backpack, you go to the gym, and when you're done with the workout, you know, you're, you're you need to eat something. You need to fuel your body. And this is a way to get good nutrition, good protein, healthy stuff into your body. And it, it's not that protein bar that tastes like cardboard that you have to almost force yourself to consume. Bill Barr, the, the flavors are incredible. The newest one is the Puffs birthday cake, which I have another box of that coming. Um, and if you want to look good this summer, you know, you want to look a little more like Dylan, get in shape, eat healthy. You got to do it. Bill Barr is one of the best ways to do it, guys. Go to built.com, use promo code LOCK15, get 15% off your order. That's promo code LOCK15 for 15% off your order at built.com. And thanks, guys, again for making Locked On Badgers your first listen every day. After you listen to us, make sure you go listen to Locked On NBA Big Board. Um, NBA draft coming up. Johnny Davis is going to be in it. You guys are going to want to head over there and get your latest NBA draft content. NBA Locked On Big Board. All right, let's bring Dylan back on. Um, Dylan, man. We were going to lead with this, but I, I'm excited to jump into it with you, Gus. Y'all, actually, you know, first, let's do this. Uh, Dylan, you're an amazing, amazing personality on Twitter in terms of your Badger content. Um, you're first out with all sorts of news. Please let everyone know where they can find you and where they can get your stuff. Uh, you can read my work over at the Badger's Wire for USA Today. And then about a week ago, launched my Substack, uh, badgernotes.substack.com. 
had amazing feedback in the first week, over 150 subscribers. So thank you to everyone who's taking the time to do that. Look forward to you know bringing some in-depth basketball analysis over there for anyone who's interested. That's awesome, man. 150 in a week is incredible. Sorry, I was going to let you add on to that, but that's fine. No, no, no very, very exciting. I, I, I didn't expect, didn't expect it at all. No, really your stuff is good. Anyone cares what I have to say? No, I, clearly you're wrong on that. Um, and we look forward. I would recommend everyone go and check out Dylan's work. He's awesome. Um, let's talk to us, Yaldman. And I, I want to talk a little more about. I, I feel like the surface level stuff has been covered. You know, he committed. He's a big man. He's skilled. Baby Jokic, et cetera, et cetera. Former Appleton guy. I want to dive a little deeper with you specifically with his fit on the teams, his fit defensively. How does he fit into what the Badgers want to do defensively, and, and what are the potential issues there? Um, I think the biggest issue you see coming in is kind of in his size. He doesn't have the greatest foot speed right now, so it's tough to determine where exactly he fits as a defender. You know, Against small lineups, I have no concern about him matching up as a five when a team goes small, but when you're facing a regular team, it's – when he's standing at six foot eight, I do have concerns about him being able to defend, you know, a four, like say like a Tyler wall or someone like that. Someone right. with a little bit of ball skills and athleticism. I don't think he has the foot speed to hang with them. That being said, he just finished his junior year. He has a lot of time to, you know, work on his body, get in the weight room. These are things that he, he's going to need to improve from a defensive standpoint. However, you know, everything he's able to bring to the table offensively, he's so skilled that, there's so much to work with right now and there's a lot of time before he gets on campus defensively there is plenty of work to be done but the guy is driven he he has a desire to be great and i have he's he's coming off multiple foot surgeries so this is the first time in a while he's able to been able to truly get healthy and from here on out i believe that he'll be able to recommit himself in the weight room and get his body where it needs to be you know kind of pick up some lateral quickness along the way and you know i think in the Badger system, and again, you 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 would you're more of an expert here than I. But with the drop coverage that they play, they're they're not asking their bigs to go out on the perimeter and switch a lot, you know, on a pick and roll. Obviously, in basketball, sometimes mismatches happen in transition, cross matches happen. But I think that drop coverage that they play, where they invite the mid range off of pick and rolls, it actually kind of suits what you would want from Gus anyway. Right. It's gonna prevent it's gonna prevent the Badgers from ever having to put Gus out on an island against anybody. Really, mm -hmm. I mean. The whole idea of the defensive scheme is to push everyone into the middle. And when that happens, you know, he's even less on an island. When If he's out on the perimeter, they know that's where I think he could run into some trouble. But again, he's still a year and some change away from coming to Madison. He he will be just fine defensively, especially if he's defending the five. It's just when he gets pulled out to the perimeter that I think there's plenty of area that he needs to improve. And that's that's where I see him as well uh, as a five. Um is there any chance he's a four for Wisconsin? I, I do think so. I really do. I, I think it's very much dependent on who else is in the program when he arrives. You know, if they are able to get land a guy like uh, Nolan Winter or someone like that that comes in with him, I do think that they would pair. They'd pair great because they both have an inside-outside game. Sure. But Winter has a little bit more size. I think that it would kind of remind me a little bit of like a John Luer, Keaton Ankeville pairing something like that where now there's like a true five one's a little smaller than the other but they're both inside out big men i think it i think it's completely dependent on who is still in the program when he arrives yeah that's very fair um i heard someone else it's funny i heard someone else mention nankaville i i don't see that 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 to me seems like a, an off compare I, I know you were comparing more just from a size and a, a positional standpoint but from from games is there a player is he more of a Kaminsky type player to you with the offensive skill and versatility, different body types, obviously, but I'm curious where you would compare him to for former Badgers. Yeah. You know, I hate to compare anybody to Frank because it just doesn't seem like it would be doing him justice, but I think Gus is coming. He is incredibly skilled. You know, he can pass. He's got great footwork, soft touch around the rim. The guy can stretch the floor because he's truly an inside out presence. And I, again, begrudgingly, We'll compare him to Frank Kaminsky just in what just the skill set that he does have. I'm not saying that that's who he's going to be, but he, you know, he's got the worth work ethic and he already has the skill set in place that a lot of players you have to work years to develop. I think he's already kind of there for him. It's really just developing physically to get to where he needs to be. I'm going to title this show. Dylan says 
he will be a all Big Ten, all conference national player of the year, period. <laughs> Put it in Sharpie. Went out, went out on the limb to do it. Uh, no, I, I also think that the feel, he has a great feel. And, and we didn't talk about this. We kind of moved on from the defensive side of this. But I think that's also defensively where the, the basketball awareness, just the general IQ in the court, the ability to take a charge, to rotate. You know, I think he, his game plays up because he has – some people just have natural basketball IQ. And I feel like he's got that. Yeah, absolutely. His feel for the game in general is terrific. But he's a team first guy. You know, you've had you've heard people like Evan Flood say, while well, they're out on the EYBL circuit, you know, watching him that he has games where his effort doesn't change whether he's shooting 15 times or three times. Mm. When you hear something like that, a guy who's just willing to do whatever it takes to win, he probably picked a little bit up of that at IMG Academy. You know, when I spoke sure. with Gus, when I spoke with Gus while he was there, he had said it was kind of humbling and you know, he you have to learn to accept a role a little bit there. You know, everyone on the floor is terrific. And for him, it's just always been about winning and doing whatever it takes to do that. Is there a deal? Let's talk offense a little bit more now. Let's continue talking fit. Is what type of teammates, what type of players do you, do you want around a skilled big man like us? I mean, is, are you trying to space the floor with shooters at this point and a good pick and roll point guard? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, in a perfect world, I think you'd love to see somebody almost exactly like Chucky. Hopefully they get to play together for a while. But I think it's just as important that you pair him with a stretch five, one that can just kind of swap with him inside out. Because that part of what makes Gus so talented is what he can do down in the low block. And if you can get another big to space the floor and let him go to work down there, I mean, let's not forget he is 240 pounds. He's strong, right? He can move people and he he's got a really nice touch around the rim. I think it's really just shooters all around and a point guard that is, you know, quick because Gus sets terrific screens. I know that sounds like a really Wisconsin thing to say, but it's something that it really stands out. He it matters sets really solid. It does. It matters. It's going to help him in the pick and pop. It's going to make everyone around him better. Yeah, just people who can space the floor. Ideally, you'd pair him with a big who can do the same. The other thing with Gus, too, I found this interesting. There's a lot of comments about just the body needs to get a little – he needs to work on his body a little bit, right? Which a lot of college, yeah. a lot of high school kids do, by the way. That's not, like, unique to Gus Yaldin. Um, I think people, when they make those comments, generalize a little too much. Like, he's also a really strong dude. For sure. Like, it's not like there is a, a massive – massive overhaul that needs to happen here he needs to work on his body a little bit like a lot of high school kids but but to your point he's a he's a strong physical dude already right like Stephen Crowell had has still has to pack on the weight. this is something that Gus doesn't have to do you know he maybe just needs to lean out a little bit if you have a guy like um a guy like Yalden coming in um I'm curious your take on this is he a guy in your opinion that plays right away or do you think he does need maybe not a redshirt year but uh, a limited role year. I believe when he enters the program, if everybody is still in place, I, I, I believe he sees the floor. I think it's, I think he plays in a role immediately. I don't see him slotting into the starting lineup right away, but I could see him being a top seven guy right away and you know having a pretty consistent role, you know, wait, just waiting for whether it be wall or crawl or whomever, depending on whether or not they use their COVID years. To move on i i think then he will step in after that yeah i, I want to leave on this question here we talked uh, a little bit about uh blackwell we talked about a seagin before we talked about some of the transfers that came in as more and again this is just kind of a take it's not necessarily the truth um, but maybe more higher floor players and not so much high high ceiling players is, is yaldon kind of the opposite of that or is he maybe again we're, we're projecting here nobody really knows yet but is he maybe the best of both is he kind of a high floor guy that has a high ceiling I, I think that's, I think you nailed it on the head. I, he comes in as a high floor guy. I think worst case scenario, you're going to get a player who can make an impact and make an impact right away. And over the course of his career, but I believe that the potential is there for him to be a foundational piece for the program. I think that he could be more, I think that he could be an all big 10 level player in his career. I truly believe that. So I'm going to leave you on this. All right. I'm going to give you the left of the floor last year. If there's any last thoughts that you have on Gus that maybe we didn't cover or anything else you wanted to bring up. Don't really have much. Uh, just kind of really a uh, really cool thing to see Gus Yeldon commit. When wow. I first started writing about the Badgers many years ago on an independent site of my own, Gus Yeldon was actually my first player interview when he was in eighth grade. 
and was a player that since eighth grade, since he was in eighth grade, I had hoped would commit to Wisconsin and have maintained contact with him throughout. And just a really cool thing to see him come. Kid loves the program. He has every step of the way and just really excited for him and for the program in general to see what he can do. That's an awesome story, dude. Who was your second uh, interview, if you don't mind me asking or if you remember? Uh, it was Ben Carlson. Oh, nice. Okay, so yeah. basketball both ways. That's awesome, dude. All right, guys, coming up, we're going to keep Dylan. we got one more segment with him, and we're lucky to have his time. We're going to talk a little bit about the um, remaining targets in the 2023 class, You know where this offseason still might go, and who we, we kind of maybe need to, to land to finish this thing up. Uh, but today's show, we also want to talk about our next sponsor of the show, Bet Online. We talk about Bet Online a lot. It is a tremendous site for all your online sports wagering information, news notes, sports news or notes. It has Vegas online games, roulette, blackjack. And Bet Online, if you if you want to get into it, is an easy to use website. All the information's there. They can walk you through the process. If you've never, you know, done any type of online gambling before, it's no stress. You don't have to put a lot of money down at all. You can play five dollars here, five dollars there. And it's it's a fun thing to do if you can do it responsibly. And you know, it's a great time of the year to do it. If you have a take on the NFL, I've talked before about Bengals, Niners as both being maybe sneaky plays. The Niners, you know, breaking in a new quarterback. The Bengals are plus eleven hundred right now. You know, that's that's pretty good odds for a team that he has Joe Burrow and, and went a long way last year, made to the Super Bowl. So, you know, it's a great time if you want to get in. Baseball's going on, the basketball playoffs are going on. Lots of fun. Bet online, easy to use website. Use uh the your mobile device today. Head over there, learn about the latest trends and actions. Uh, bet online where the game starts. Thank you guys again for making Lockdown Badgers your first listen every day. Free and available wherever you get podcasts. Free and available on YouTube. We really appreciate the support. And we're going to bring uh, Dylan back in for one more. And Dylan, we're going to kick it off with um, other 2023 targets, other 2023 potential commits, add additions to this class. Obviously, the work is never done. Um, the Badgers have had a busy offseason. But where might they pivot next? You know, having two commits before July, you know, during those AAU circuits is critical for Wisconsin. You know, to have two of your players already in the fold allows you to really double down on a couple other guys that you're after. And in this case, I think the attention pretty squarely turns to Nolan Winter uh, continuing to pursue Jamie Kaiser and the Badgers have long been on Asa Thomas. Those are three players that I think we're going to see Wisconsin pursue pretty heavily. They, I, I believe they're going to take three in this class at the at the minimum. You know, there's even an outside chance that we could see fourth. I think three is what we're going to see. Uh, we've seen Jamie Kaiser's commitment actually really pick up since Wisconsin mm. gave him an offer. And thankfully for the Badgers, they were able to get him on campus very quickly because now he's picked offer, offers up from Virginia and plenty of other Power 5 schools. But uh, Nolan Winter, I think, is probably top of the board for them right now. Um you know, th this is the time of the year where players blow up. And so to have two guys, you know, like a John Blackwell, who would have assuredly seen more offers than he did to have him in. I mean, I, I don't think that he's a finished product yet, but there's plenty there's plenty of unrealized upside there right now. He's a terrific defender. And obviously, we've already spoken about what, what we have with Gus Yeldon, but I think that mm -hmm. the Badgers are in a really decent spot with a couple other prospects that really fit what they're doing. And more importantly, they're, they're shooters. They're, they've been in deep with these guys. I, I really like where Wisconsin's spot is. We've we've recruited some really terrific fits, and at Wisconsin, that is probably more important than anywhere else. Yeah, the culture really matters here. Uh, that's a great point. Uh, so you have Nolan Winter, um, Jamie Kaiser, Asa Thomas, different types of players. You know, Asa and, and Kaiser are more wing players. Winter is a, a four or five, somewhere in that range. Is there a guy here that would be the perfect addition out of those? You, you mentioned Winter, but is there more of a need on the team for a wing? I... If it wasn't winter, uh, I would love to see Jamie Kaiser. I just, the, the guy is an absolute sharpshooter. He's got terrific size out on the wing, mm -hmm. six foot six. He's a really versatile defender already, which is super encouraging. And he's got a, an expanding offensive game in general. He can, he can attack the basket. He's got great length. Just, I'm sure Greg Gard is salivating at what he could do defensively on top of, you know, just that pure stroke. I, if Nolan Winter would be my option 1A, but I would say Kaiser's 1B. Like both of them would just be terrific fits at Wisconsin and really, really good gets. A hey, big picture question here because some of this to me feels kind of like where Wisconsin is and where they've been and where basketball is and where it's going. Um, basketball has spread out more. It's more shooting, more versatility, more defensive versatility. Kaiser fits all of that more. The 6'6 wing out of Virginia. Absolutely. Is, is there almost a point where 
the Badgers, not modern. Listen, what Wisconsin does works. Let's be very clear on that. But are they almost held back to their own um, preset standards a little bit? Or do they need to, to modernize a roster slightly to kind of keep up? I think we've actually seen them begun to modernize their roster. So, I mean, for for me, at least, look no further than Tyler Wall. I mean, that's not the traditional four that Wisconsin's sure. been rolling out for the better part of the last decade. They have swapped out, you know, for the defensive versatility. They are putting defense first there. He's more athletic. I think in previous years, you might have seen him at the three. Obviously, he's not a terrific shooter, but... I think we've seen them slowly but surely begin to modernize what they're doing while kind of keeping all of the core principles in place. I mean, offensively, people like to talk about the swing. They don't run the swing all that often. No. You know, they it looks different, but they often run they run a lot of components of the flow, which is similar to what Golden State ran during the beginning of their dynasty. It looks obviously considerably different at Wisconsin because they're still playing with some core principles and they want it to kind of emulate some of the other offensive sets that they run. So it's a lot of things mixed together to make their own hybrid offense. But I think over the years, I think they're trending that way already. But uh, as far as like a roster construction standpoint, I think that they are continuing to trend that way. Like John Blackwell is another example of a guy who doesn't really fit any one specific position, but he brings to the table Mm -hmm. a bunch of things that they value. And they're just going to right now, they're just focused on getting the players and they'll figure it out later. And I do kind of appreciate that. Yeah, that's a good point. And to be fair, you know, you bring in Nolan Winters, a 6'10 guy who can shoot the ball, play inside outside. You're going to win basketball games with a dude like that as well. You know, like that, that yeah. guy deserves to be on the court. Um, if you had to, looking at these three guys, where would you say we're most likely to end up? Do you have a feel that one of these three is more likely than the other two to be on a, to kind of be a Wisconsin verbal or none of them? Do you feel like all of them are? I I feel like right now with the information that I do have that, I, I can't say which one I think will land at Wisconsin, but I can say that I believe that Nolan Winter is going to come down to Wisconsin and Minnesota. I think that it's, I mean, unless some bigger programs throw their hat in the ring, I think we're looking at a two-horse race, and that one is a very realistic possibility and one that would be huge for the program. And I know that after speaking with Jamie Kaiser, I know that loyalty means everything to him, and Wisconsin was the first high-major program that, gave him some love and he, that's why he got on campus so quickly. He saw the fit. What what Wisconsin did on that visit is not lost on him. Obviously he's got mm-hmm. some big players right now, but I think that they're going to be in the mix until the very end there. I really do. That's all good news, man. Um, I want to leave on this. I've, I've already taken you for about 30 minutes. I, I always run out of time before I run out of questions and topics for you, Dylan, but is there still a potential to land uh, a Chris vote replacement, uh, a pivot that can back up Crowell? Cause that's going to be needed this year. That's, that's a big time need. Absolutely. I, I would, I'd bet the farm that they're going to bring one in. Uh, I, it's awfully disappointing earlier today, John Asiaco, the Virginia tech transfer, he committed to George Mason. That was a player that Wisconsin was actively trying to get on campus for a visit. Uh, and they, at that point, if you agree to a visit, the way that my understanding is red guard gets you on campus, then that's essentially, that's essentially them extending the offer, but they don't extend the offer until you are on campus. So they were, they were in deep. They did the homework. They wanted him. It's off the table. They're back to the portal, but they obviously see this as a need as well. And it's something that's not going away. They're going to continue, continue looking for that man. But you have to remember a lot of the people in the transfer portal are looking for a better opportunity than they had where, you know, Stephen Crawl is our starting center. We have to find the guy who wants to come in and play high major basketball and just play a role. And unfortunately that guy just hasn't presented himself just yet. All right, and that's a really good point. Like you're, you're bringing in a guy to be a backup. That's a hard sell. Um, all right, guys, he is Dylan Graff. Um, well, as always, we appreciate the time, Dylan. Thank you so much. I uh, look forward to having you on again. We try to get you on at least every other week. Um, so we really appreciate it, brother. All right, thanks for having me, man. Have a good one. You too. Thank you. Um, guys, he is Dylan Graff. Go check out his work, please. We'll link it in the show as always. And that was our show today, guys. We talked a little bit about um, – some of the new recruiting news, you know, obviously, you know, landing a defensive tackle, a guy that we think could step right into the the, the lineup in a year or two in Roderick Pierce, um, Gusty Alden. It was exciting to go a little deeper on his game and the potential defensive fit. Um, as always, guys, we really appreciate you listening. Uh, the subscriber, the subscribers, the reviews, the comments on YouTube have been incredible. Can't tell you how much I appreciate it. The time is your most valuable thing. And for you to spend a little bit with us talking Badgers, it means a lot to me. So we're going to leave you on that. Thank you for making Lockdown Badgers your first listen every single day. 
Um, and we'll be back at you tomorrow, five days a week. Appreciate it. And we'll talk later.